Welcome back to the live show. I'm here with the wonderful Dave. How's it going? <laughs> Good. I, <laughs> I always wonder what they're welcoming back from because I don't you. know anything. Oh, because they were just watching me. Yeah. Oh, there's like a lag. Okay. Well, see, because there's people that yeah, yeah. watch shows. Yeah, That's yeah. how show, So there's a thing called like broadcasting uh -huh. where there's people that watch or listen mm -hmm. and then we give them things. Mm -hmm. So they were with you. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they were away, and now uh -huh. they're back. And now they're back. Yeah. So good. So good. Just being hospitable, man. That's good. But uh, so it is a cold winter day, but you'd brought up. Uh, it is super cold. Spring. It's, it's terrifyingly cold right now. Terrifyingly. The one thing that can break the cold is table tennis. Yeah, it can. And I love table tennis. And the, I've had questions. This is Q&A, actually. And I have questions from people asking me. I've heard that Dave loves ping pong and that it's kind of a problem. <laughs> but I want to play really badly. Yeah. I want to uh, partake in this problem. You tell if you if you want to play ping pong, we actually have ping pong leagues that run. Yes. And we have a new ping pong league that will be starting uh, right after spring break. Yeah, and there's two conferences. The, right? it's, it's so big there are conferences like an east and west conference. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Dell is the commissioner of one of the conferences. Yeah, one of the one. I would like. Uh, I mean, I'm like, I'm like to do the East Coast. Is that cool? I mean, you're from like the west of the Canada. Is that a thing? The west, the west of the Canada. Yeah. Anyway, it, e email info at westwinds.org if you want to play ping pong and is, is spring pong is what we call spring it. Spring pong. Because yep. it would be the spring league, but so mm -hmm. good, so good. It's great. So that's uh, first Q and A done, down, over with. Cool. So next question. We have a lot of questions from the internet. Um, here's a question that came in to our Twitter account. It says, what determines whether or not our sacrifice is worth giving? Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe the question would be, to whom are you sacrificing? Mm -hmm. um, because I think uh, you can sacrifice a lot for mm -hmm. sports. You can sacrifice a lot for your career. And sometimes those things pay off, and, and sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. In fact, more often than not, they don't pay off in the way that you're hoping. I mean, mm -hmm. Very few hockey players, for example, end up in the NHL. Right. And then, of course, very few pro uh, NHL players end up in the Hall of Fame or mm -hmm. win a Stanley Cup or all that good stuff. Like Wayne Gretzky's brother? Do you have a brother, really? I don't know, but see, we don't know. Yeah. Nobody knows. Shane. 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 Greg. Shane. Greg Gretzky. <laughs> Greg Gretzky. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then I think then conversely, when when you're sacrificing for the Lord, that, that's why Paul instructs us do everything as unto the Lord. You mm -hmm. know, I think because when you sacrifice for God, when you understand that even your your job is is working towards the glory of God, then I think the sacrifices become worth it. Because there's not any sacrifice that he disdains. Mm -hmm. A small sacrifice of f five additional minutes of prayer, mm -hmm. a small sacrifice of uh, a momentary act of kindness, um, uh, a, an open-hearted posture to the people around you. I think all that stuff, when it's done for God, he, he gobbles it all up quite greedily and quite enthusiastically. Um, and, and I think those things always matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think in my life, too, when you're talking about sacrifice and forgiveness I think we always look at forgiveness like the big thing like this person cheated or this person murdered or something and it's like I gotta forgive that but I mean in my life there's more little things that happen that I need mm -hmm. to forgive and be gracious about like and so how much of a sacrifice is it when someone cuts you off in traffic to not be like Rah! like that might be a huge sacrifice sure but I think God gives us opportunity to work on the big sacrifices by by the little ones, They're yeah, by paying stones. attention to the little ones. Yeah, I, I will say though that the big ones, at least, at least we acknowledge that it is actually forgiveness that we have to do. I mean, when somebody cuts you off in traffic, mm -hmm. you're mad, but then it's not that you forgive them so much; you just forget about it. Yeah, because you know, ten minutes later, you, somebody else has cut you off, mm -hmm. and you're onto the next angry moment. But right. but big things. I mean, when somebody breaks your heart, yeah, when somebody betrays your confidence, mm -hmm. then, then you know. I mean, this is a thing, and until I forgive them, it's not going away. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's where I think the the idea of forgiveness has so much power is when we realize there's there's this massive stone in our hearts, mm -hmm. and the only way it can be removed is not to be vindicated or proven right, or not to have the other person apologize. It's it's for the Holy Spirit to help us take that stone out to, to forgive them, um, which of course is a long and terrible process more often than not. But the results are are infinitely worth it. Yeah, you know? infinitely worth it. I like that. That's a good way to go. Uh, another question here is. So we're talking about being giving, and uh, says a family member is super loving and giving to a point of annoyance. Um, like, you do know, they want to be in my family? <laughs> <laughs> I will take them. that. Like, they're kind of like a Mar like a this is like something like a Martha complex of like the person that's so serving and oh. so giving, and so it's just like 
are you okay? You're being sacrificial, but like, are you really? Or is this like a control? Like, I don't want to assume someone's heart, but it is sure. hard when someone's. It seems like it's controlling their their sure. service and their their giving. Like, how do you sure. deal with that? Sure. That, that. That's a really rare but but uh, actual thing that sometimes people will, um, let's say, for example, uh, I'm making up a scenario here, but about a grandmother <laughs> who wants to babysit. And so at first you go, oh, that's great. Then it the, the gives mom and dad a chance to go out and, and go on a date and get some time alone. But then the grandmother rearranges the house and sets up new routines or, or violates <laughs> yeah. whatever rules the parents have established for their kids. And then the grandparent wants to go from you know, babysitting once a week to now babysitting two days a week to then showing up unannounced. And mm-hmm. so, so it, on the one hand, it's easy for the grandmother in this scenario to say, well, look, I'm, I'm being so generous. I'm trying to help. But, but you're right. In, in a scenario like that, it can feel controlling and it can feel manipulative. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it's important for, for mom and dad in that case to be able to have that open and frank conversation and, and set up some boundaries, even though that'll, that'll be painful uh, and uncomfortable. I do, however, think that much more common is a scenario where, where someone else's kindness exposes our inability to be that kind. Mm-hmm. And so we, we lash out at them because we're ashamed that they're better than we are. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we kind of poo-poo on their kindness because we're naturally cynical mm-hmm. and our world is cynical. And so we go, oh, it must be fake. When, when in actual fact, it could just be genuine. Yeah. Um, so I would say there, there are so many jerks in the world, even if somebody's kind to a fault, like, leave them alone. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot, I th- a lot of it just comes down to like communicating. Like, just being like, hey, what's going on? If you're talking to someone, you can find out a lot. You can, you can, yeah. I mean, it, it, of course, it's, it's so very situation to situation, and, the, and there's no real easy answers. But, but I do think um, if you're the person who's frustrated by someone else's over-kindness, just chill out. It, it could be worse. You've got a problem. You've got a problem. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, and then if, if it really is, if, you, if you're listening to that going, no way, man. If, if you know, I didn't ask my question well enough, if you knew whoever this person was, you'd agree with me. Then I go, okay, you, you probably need to have a talk with them and be prepared for the fact that they're not going to receive it well. Mm-hmm. And it probably won't be the last talk you have, and all those talks will suck, and and it'll hurt your relationships. But but if if that's worth it, then okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, hey, Dave. Thank you. Th- thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that. Spring pong. Spring pong. And if you ever have any questions for Dave and the gang, feel free to message the Facebook page or use the hashtag Ask Westwinds. Uh, Dave will be back if you'd like to see him catch him more live in service. I'll bring my paddle. He'll bring his paddle. 10, 30, and 11. Uh, 10 and 11, 30. I'm sorry. But yeah, cool. Thanks, man. All right. Cheers. All right. Back to Courtney. Courtney.